Today, year two, in our geography lesson, we're going to be focusing in on one of the countries in Africa. So here we are looking at the continent of Africa again at the top, the North Africa. We've got the great big Sahara Desert and Egypt down the bottom. In the south, we've got South Africa. And that side is West Africa, where Sierra Leone is. But today we're going to go to East Africa. And we're going to look at the country of Kenya. So if I zoom in a bit, Kenya should appear. There it is. Now, Kenya is has got a coast, so it has got the sea, but it's also got lots of other countries like Uganda and Somalia and Tanzania all around it. So let's zoom in. Now, if you notice that, it sort of stands out, even when you're looking in a picture from space. That's the highest mountain in Kenya, and that's called Mount Kenya. And you can see the shape of the mountain and around the bottom of the mountain. It's very dark green, isn't it? There's a very sort of thick forest. Whereas up in the north of Kenya, it's quite sandy and orange. Now, we're going to look for, there it is, the capital city, which is Nairobi. So I'm going to zoom in on Nairobi. And as you can see, it's a very busy, built-up city with lots of roads and lots of streets. It's probably similar size to Brighton, not quite sure. Now I'm going to zoom in on one road in Nairobi. So let's pick up the little man and see whoa, where we can land. Let's fly. Now most of these streets are blue, so they have been mapped. So we should be able to land anywhere. And there we are, and I think it says Coinage Street, which is a road in the centre of Nairobi. Now, as you can see, Nairobi is pretty much like cities all over the world. It's got shops and offices, blocks of flats, lots of traffic, lots of cars around. You can sort of tell that it's hot and sunny. And so lots of people, lots of children in Kenya live in cities like this and go to school and live in houses and flats. But what we're going to be finding out later on is that some people in Kenya live a very different way of life. So this is the centre of Nairobi. And maybe if you've got Google Earth, you could go and have a look around Nairobi yourself. So this is another area of central Nairobi. I noticed that those other streets were photographed during lockdown. And that's why they look so empty, because you can see some people had masks on. But these are older pictures, a bit like Brighton at the moment. The middle of Brighton is half empty, so this is what it would normally look like when people are busy and the shops are all open and there's lots of traffic. So, of course, lots of cities all over the world look very different at the moment. This is what cities used to look like, full of people. But then the other photos we had, the streets were empty because most cities in the world are in some sort of lockdown where shops are shut and there's just not as many people out and about as usual. So this is another part of Kenya. It says above the Maasai village. Now you can't zoom in too close to this because the photographs aren't, you can't sort of lift up the little man. But that is a tiny village of houses. So this is all in the same country and these people live very differently to how we live. And this is a close-up of that village. So in some parts of Kenya, people are still living as they have done for thousands of years in tiny remote villages. And we'll be finding out more about that later. So if we look back at the world map, you can see the continent of Africa there in yellow. And there is a map of Kenya itself. This, and you can see the sort of lake quite near to Kenya down there on the east side. And that's a zoomed in map. And you can see where Nairobi is. So Kenya is located in East Africa and it's known as the Republic of Kenya. Its population, so that means how many people live there, is around 44 million. Kenya is one small country compared to the vast size of the continent of Africa. This is Kenya's national flag. Nairobi is the capital city and Mombasa is the largest city. And I think Mombasa is on the coast, it's a port city. The Tana River, or the Tana River, is the longest river in Kenya. 
Mount Kenya is the highest mountain in Kenya and the country itself was named after the mountain. So they didn't call the mountain after Kenya. The mountain was already called Mount Kenya and they named the country after it. Here we've got some photos of land in Kenya and as you can see there a lot of it is very dry and arid. And those people were actually carrying tanks on their backs to go and collect water. Some people have to walk long, long distances to collect water. And that's often a job that children have, collecting the water. So the Henya is really famous for the savanna, which when they get the rains, turns into this wonderful lush green grassland. And that's where many of the most famous African animals can be found. So there are mountains, there are vi valleys, volcanoes and flat desert landscapes. There's a picture of some of the mountains. Here are some pictures of some of the crops that are grown. So we've got maize at the top, we've got bananas and there are lots of other exotic fruits that grow really well in Kenya. We'll find out more about those when we look at a book after half term. And then we've got, I think that's coffee and tea is also grown in Kenya. So lots of foods that we can't grow in our country because it's not hot enough to grow bananas. They can grow quite easily in Kenya. Here's a closer look at the Kenyan flag. And it shows you, it's been labelled to show you what the different colours mean. So I think you might have one of these to colour in. So the black represents the people of Kenya. The green represents the natural wealth of the land. The red represents the bloodshed during the struggle for freedom, so the struggle to win independence. The white stands for peace, because Kenya is now a country at peace. And the shield and the spears represents defending their freedom. So if you've got a copy of the flag, you could have a go at colouring it in. And I think on your worksheet, there's a little version of the flag for you to colour in as well. There are lots of great websites with more information about Kenya. I think this one is the National Geographic Kids site, so I'll put a few links in. I won't read the whole site, but we'll just have a click through. So it's got a list there of the key facts, like the capital city is Nairobi, and the official language is Swahili and English. There's the flag again. And this introduction is a good introduction. Even if you've never been to Kenya, chances are you know what it looks like. Kenya's savannah is familiar from movies, TV shows, books and even adverts on the telly. It's the landscape many people imagine when they think of Africa. And there's the map again. It talks there about the Great Rift Valley, which is a kilometre long tear in the Earth's crust. And so that's a famous landmark in Kenya. In Kenya, more than 60 languages are spoken and there are more than 40 ethnic groups. So it says almost everyone there speaks more than one African language. So they may speak Swahili, but they also speak another African language. School is free in Kenya, but many children are too busy to go to classes. They help their families by working the land, tending cattle, cooking or fetching water. And that's especially true in the countryside where life is quite different to how it is in the cities. Millions of people visit Kenya each year to see its endless savanna and the animals that inhabit it. Elephants, lions, cheetahs, giraffes, zebras, hippos, rhinos and more. That is a great list with commas, isn't it? It's a very long list. The Kenyan government has set up more than 50 reserves and parks to protect these animals. There's a lovely picture of two rhinos which are very endangered now because they're hunted for their horns. This is something you might not have known, that Kenya was a colony of the United Kingdom from 1920. So it actually gained independence from the United Kingdom. And each year they celebrate this on the 12th of December. And I think that might be a picture of their parliament building there. Because it looks a bit like Big Ben, doesn't it, with the clock tower. And there's an interesting fact in the middle here. It says many scientists, some scientists think that Kenya may have been the original birthplace of humans because they've found bones in Kenya that are the oldest that they've found anywhere in the world. There's a sad part of Kenya's history. So slavery is a big part of Kenya's history. Around sort of 400, 300 years ago, many Kenyans were kidnapped and taken as slaves and taken to many other countries all over the world, which is a history that happened in many African countries. And it ends there with a beautiful picture of some flamingos, which is maybe not an animal you'd think of. But there's big lakes in Kenya where thousands of flamingos live. So maybe you could have a look on the internet and see if you can find out any more facts. 
In your pack, you should have a sheet that looks something like this. So I don't think the flags are coloured in on yours, so you can always colour those in later. And so on one side, we've got Kenya. Don't worry if you haven't got your pack yet. You can always just draw a line down the middle of a sheet of lined paper and put Kenya on one side and then UK, which stands for the United Kingdom, on the other side. And what you're going to do is compare the countries. Now, of course, that's a bit tricky because the UK has got lots of different types of countryside in it and Kenya is very different as well. It's a big country. But you're just going to compare the main things about them. So we've got the capital city, the language, wildlife. So that means what um, animals live there in the wild. We've got climate. That means the weather. What do you think the weather's mostly like? Crops are things that you can grow there. And landscape, that means what the countryside looks like. So to help you, we're going to go through the Kenya side together. So the capital city of Kenya is Nairobi. And the language, the main language is Swahili. There's lots of other languages, but Swahili is the main language. Wildlife, we've got elephants, lions, giraffes, zebras, and I'm sure you can think of lots more animals that live there. The climate, it's hot, it's dry, it's sunny. They do have a rainy season, so it does rain, but it's mainly a lot hotter and drier than our country is. Because it's so hot, the crops they can grow are coffee, bananas, maize, mangoes, and lots of other exotic fruits, things like pineapples, that we couldn't grow in our country unless it was sort of in a heated greenhouse. And the landscape, there are lakes, valleys, mountains. The main one is savanna, which are those huge grassy plains where it's hundreds of miles of grass, which is where all those animals live. There's even some volcanoes. Now, there's a reason I've covered up the other side. So this flag at the top, that's called the Union Jack. That's the flag of the United Kingdom. But when we do this in class, the children find this side harder than the Kenya side because they've just seen all the information about Kenya. Now, hopefully you know the capital city of our country because we found out about it, didn't we, before Christmas and that big disaster that happened in 1666. So I hope you know that one. I think you all know that the main language in our country is English, although just like Kenya, there are lots of other languages that people speak. Now, wildlife. This is the one that people find the hardest. That means wild animals in our country. So not cats and dogs and hamsters. These are things that are in the wild. So last year, someone said tigers. And I said, would you see a tiger walking across the patch? So see if you can think of some animals that live in the wild in our country. And we'll talk about them later in the Zoom, in the Zoom meeting. Climate. Now, if I look out the window now, I can see exactly what our climate's like. It's damp, it's wet, it's cloudy for a lot of the time. Of course, it's sometimes sunny, but it never gets that hot. It's something called mild. I'll write that word down. It's a mild climate. It never gets that cold or that hot. Crops in our country. I'm going to leave that one. What things can you grow in our country? I'll give you one. Apples. <laughs> you can grow apples. Can you think of any other things that we grow in our country? Not that we fly in from other countries, but that we can actually grow here. And the landscape. So if you go out of Brighton, what does the landscape look like? Can you see volcanoes and mountains? Probably not. It's mainly sort of hills. Some places quite flat. We do have some places that are quite hilly, but they're never sort of big enough to be mountains, not unless you're right up the top of Scotland. So I want you to fill in the other side. So make sure you fill in the Kenya side. You can use some of my ideas. You can add pictures if you like. And then I want you to fill in the side for the UK.